You've heard people talk about market structure, but no matter how many videos you watch or how much analysis you do, you still don't quite understand the concept. The reason for that is almost every single trading educator or trading influencer, they overcomplicate the concept of market structure and it makes it confusing for you to understand. Market structure is actually a very simple concept to understand and after you finish this video, you will realize the simplicity that comes with it and how straightforward it actually is. Before I get in depth with it, let's understand the definition of market structure. Market structure refers to the current behavior and flow of the markets and even that kind of sounds a little bit obscure and difficult to understand so let's break it down even simpler. Market structure is essentially the relationship between the buyers and the sellers in the markets. The markets move in the first place because of buying and selling so if we could have a very strong understanding of how to read that buying and selling, we're going to be able to understand market structure and take advantage of it to actually make money. So if market structure essentially all boils down to reading price action, let's go even deeper and define what price action even is. And we know that it's the relationship between the buyers and the sellers, and we're essentially studying the way that the buyers and sellers are moving price. If we can know how to read what prices have done in the past and how prices are moving right now, we can speculate, anticipate, and ultimately make money on what prices are gonna do in the future. So in the future, and as you're continuing with this video, whenever you hear the word market structure, just think of price action and think of the buyers and the sellers moving the markets. From here, let's go ahead and dive into reading price action at a very basic level. So we're going to be looking at the price charts, which is exactly what you see in front of you. The first step in reading price action, and of course, this is on tradingview.com, but this will apply for any trading platform, is you want to make sure you have regular Japanese candles selected. There are bars, there are hollow candles, there are volume candles, there are haikanashi. You don't want to be using any of those. You want to be using the most basic Japanese candles, which is this candles option right here. The reason I like to use Japanese candles, which are the regular candles that most people use, is because it really helps us understand the buying and the selling that's occurring in the markets. So the first step in reading and understanding price action is being able to read what these candlesticks are actually telling you. These candlesticks literally show you the buying and the selling that is happening in the markets and different candlesticks can give you different types of information about what is going on with price. We're about to dive into it a little bit deeper, but keep in mind that one candlestick isn't going to tell you the whole story, but a sequence, a group of candlesticks can give you a far better representation on what's going on with price and what the market structure is. Before we could read sequences of candlesticks, we have to understand how to read individual candlesticks. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I actually already created an in-depth video on how to read candlesticks. I'm going to leave the link on the screen, so feel free to watch that video before you continue with this one. Regardless, I'm still going to do an overview on how to read candlesticks in this video, so let's get to that right now. Even though it's basic, I promise you there will be information in here that you did not know before, and I will kind of elevate your perspective when it comes to this basic information. So the first thing you need to know about reading candlesticks is we have the body and we have the tail of the candlestick. Let's go ahead and start with the body. If it's a green candlestick, the bottom and top of the body can represent the highs and lows for price during that candlestick's time frame. Whether it represents the highs or the lows is going to depend if the body is a green or red candlestick. If it's green, that means price opened at the bottom of the body and it closed at the top of the body. And if it's red, that means price is opened at the top of the body and closed at the bottom of the body. In other words, if it's green, price is opened here and closed up here, so prices went up. If it's red, price is opened up here and closed down here, which means prices went down. This is going to make even more sense once I introduce time frames and how time frames can affect candlestick formation. We also have the tail or the wick 
of the candlestick and those represent the highs and lows of price during that candlesticks time frame. If you're still confused on how candlesticks are actually formed, don't worry, I'm about to show you some diagrams that's going to make a lot more sense. So the first diagram that I wanna show you are the different types of candlesticks that can be formed. Depending on where the buying and the selling is happening, candlesticks can form in different ways. And the way that they form give us information about what's going on with price action, what's going on with market structure, ultimately what's going on between the buyers and the sellers. So let's take a look at this green ball right here. Price is opened at the bottom of the body. We don't have a tail, so the bottom of the body represents the absolute lows of price during that time frame. And we closed at the highs of price during that candlesticks time frame. The same exact thing applies if it's a red bar, except it's the opposite. We opened up here, right? That was the highs of price during that candlesticks time frame. And we closed at the bottom of the body. We don't have a tail, so that bottom of the body represents the lows of where we closed and you know the absolute lows of that candlesticks time frame. The same exact thing applies for a red candlestick, except it's the opposite. Price is opened up here and then closed at the bottom of the body. We don't have any tails, so the top and bottom of the body represent the highs and lows of price action during that candlesticks time frame. As you can see, this type of candlestick is a lot different we have a huge tail and i don't want to overcomplicate it but whenever you see a large tail like this or a large tail like that it means that the sellers have taken control of price let's go ahead and unpack that once you see the upcoming diagrams you'll actually understand how the sellers have taken over price on a topping tail but just remember that topping tail equals sellers have taken over price the same thing applies for a bottoming tail except it's the opposite so whenever you see a bottoming tail like this with a green body or a bottoming tail like this with a red body just remember that the buyers have taken control of price like i said you're going to understand this deeper once we look at the diagrams whenever you see something like this this is called a doji bar this is where you have tails on both ends of the candlestick and you have a very small body, the price in which we opened and closed is very similar and close together. This type of candlestick essentially represents uncertainty in the markets. The buyers haven't taken control, nor have the sellers taken control. Now let's go ahead and understand how time frames correlate with these candlesticks. And this is a very important concept. I see so many, you know, pretty decent traders fail because they don't have a strong understanding of using multiple time frames and how time frames can be very useful for us as traders. No matter what platform you use, whether it's tradingview.com or really any platform, you're going to see some sort of drop down or you know a bunch of different options of different time frames you could look at. You have one minute time frames, two minute time frames, you have one in five second time frames, you have hourly time frames, and then you have daily, weekly, and monthly time frames as well. I'm sure a very common question you might have is which time frames should I use in the first place? And the key is it's not about using one time frame, it's about using multiple time frames. As you're about to find out, using multiple time frames gives you an elevated perspective on what's going on with price, it gives you multiple perspectives. On what's going on with price for example let's say we have this one 15 minute candlestick that means at 9 30 we opened at the bottom of the body and at 9 45 15 minutes later hence it's a 15 minute candlestick we closed at the top of the body but if we start moving to a smaller time frame we're going to see more candlesticks that actually encompass that 15 minute candlestick so if we go to the five minute chart we have three five minute candles where the first one opened at 9.30, closed at 9.35. The second one opened at 9.35, closed at 9.40. The third one opened at 9.40 and closed at 9.45. These three five minute candlestick represent one 15 minute candlestick. The same thing applies for the one minute chart. Every single one of these candlesticks represents one minute worth of time. So we're going to see 15 one minute candlesticks for three five minute candlesticks and one 15 minute candlestick. And of course, the same exact thing applies if it's a bearish red bar, it's just the opposite. So let's go ahead and understand how this works with a bottoming tail. And remember, we talked about how a bottoming tail equals buyers have taken control. And when you look at this diagram, that actually makes sense. 
on the larger term time frame maybe this is the you know 15 minute chart or whatever it's a larger term time frame we have a bottoming tail you could see how that bottoming tail is formed on a smaller time frame and you could see why a bottoming tail is actually bullish the buyers have actually taken control so we open here we drop significantly and then the buyers took price from the lows which is the low of the wick perfect and they brought prices all the way back up to close right here which is the top of the body on the larger term time frame even if it's a bearish bottoming tail where we have a red body you could still see how the buyers took control on the smaller time frames thus making it bullish the same thing applies for a topping tail, except it's the opposite. Remember, topping tail means that the sellers have taken control. Well, we have a topping tail on a larger term time frame. And if you go to the smaller time frame, you could actually see how the sellers have taken control. The buyers brought prices up to make a high at this wick. And then the sellers took control up here and they brought prices all the way back down to make lows here, which is the bottom of the body on the larger term time frame. And the same exact thing applies if it's a green topping tail. You could still see that the sellers have taken control of price despite this being a green candlestick. And when it comes to a doji bar, we have a larger term doji bar right here. And if we look to the smaller time frames, we could see how the battle between the buyers and sellers was essentially even, right? We got bought, then we got sold, then we got bought again, and we closed at, you know, a pretty similar price in which we opened. Therefore, the battle between the buyers and the sellers was basically even. Nobody really won. Hopefully, you can begin to understand why looking at multiple time frames is so important. You might have a candlestick on a larger term time frame that signals one thing, but then you look at the smaller time frames and you understand that there was more to the story. There was more to unpack. There was more information that the buyers and the sellers are providing us. That's why it is so important to always look at multiple time frames. This is called multiple time frame analysis. I know at this point you probably understand it, but I want to go even deeper and show you how the way that candlesticks are formed on the smaller time frames could have a huge difference on whether you take a trade on the larger time frames. But let's look at this diagram right here. We have a 15 minute candle here. And we have a 15 minute candle here and these candles are identical right we opened at the bottom of the body here bottom of the body here and we closed at the top of the body here and at the top of the body here however if you look at the smaller time frames in this case we're going from the 15 minute chart to the five minute chart you could see that this 15 minute bar formed in completely different ways in these two examples in this case we have consecutive green bars in a row we're just continuing higher but in this case, we have one huge green bar in a row, and then we have two kind of resting bars that are just chilling at the top of the first green bar. Believe it or not, this is really important information, especially once we begin talking about strategies in the markets. The way that this 15 minute candle was formed is completely different in these two examples, and that's why it's so important to look at multiple time frames let's go even deeper though in this case we have two identical five minute candlesticks completely identical but if you look at the smaller time frames if you look at a different perspective on what's happening with price you could see that the way that these two five minute candlesticks were formed is completely different in this case we have five consecutive one minute green bars in a row but in this case we have one huge uh, one minute green bar and then we have four consecutive green bars kind of basing at the highs of this one minute green bar the way that these two five minute candlesticks are formed is completely different and that is extremely important information for our strategies and for reading price action in general let's look at a live example so you can understand this even further let's go ahead and look at the qqq which is the tracking etf for the nasdaq Let's say we're looking at this candlestick right here and we are on the weekly chart, which means this one candlestick represents one week worth of time. Well, let's say we go to the daily chart and we know that there are five trading days in one week when it comes to the QQQ because it trades in the US stock market and Saturday and Sunday, the markets are closed. So the last five daily candlesticks is going to represent one weekly candlestick. So this one, two, three, four, five candlesticks represents that one weekly candlestick 
that we just circled. Hopefully by this point, you have a really strong understanding of not only candlesticks, but how they correlate with time frames and the importance of looking at multiple time frames to get a very deep perspective and understanding on what's going on with price action and ultimately market structure. Now that we understand the importance of candlesticks and how to read them and how they're made up on different time frames, it's time to understand the different sequences that are created with these candlesticks. These sequences are ultimately known as trends in the market. The first type of trend that exists in the market is an uptrend where we have higher highs, higher lows. Price is ultimately moving higher. The other type of trend that we have is a downtrend where we have lower lows, lower highs, and prices are ultimately continuing lower. We also have a sideways trend where neither the buyers or the sellers are strong enough to actually create an uptrend or a downtrend and we're essentially consolidating basing and staying in one price area. In a sideways trend, it's not very conclusive on where prices are going. So that's exactly why I try to avoid sideways trends. Whenever I'm trading, I want to be trading in the direction of where price is already going. So I like to trade in uptrends or in downtrends. I like to avoid sideways trends because it's uncertain. I don't really know where price is going. So how do we determine what the trend is? Well, we're going to be looking at multiple time frames and we're going to be looking at the candlesticks in those time frames and the sequences that they're creating. Just as a very simple example, let's look at this circled section right here. What is the trend? Well, it should be really easy to understand. This is an uptrend. We have higher highs, we have higher lows, and you could see that the overall direction of price during this period of time is trending higher. By the way, we are looking at the weekly chart. Whenever I'm trying to establish a trend, I always like to start off looking at the higher time frames to see the most elevated perspective of that stock, crypto, or Forex pair. Let's look at this right here, and it should be very obvious as well. What type of trend is this? Well, this is a downtrend. We have lower lows, we have lower highs, and it's pretty evident that overall, prices are trending lower. We'll do one more example. It's very simple. You guys probably already know the answer, but this is obviously an uptrend. We have higher highs, higher lows. Just by looking at this, even if you're a beginner, you could see that prices are ultimately continuing higher and trending higher. Perfect. So you just learned the first step in any type of trade analysis. Start off on the higher time frames and understand the trend, understand the bias. Are prices continuing higher or are prices continuing lower? And whichever way prices are continuing in, that's the direction in which you want to trade it. So now that we understand the trend, how do we make money off of an uptrend or a downtrend? So let's look at an uptrend for an example. We know that prices are trending higher. The overall direction in price is higher. But how can we capitalize off of that? So our job as traders is to find entries within established trends and from there capitalize on prices continuing higher or lower. So in other words, if I have an uptrend here, I am trying to time my entries to get into that uptrend and benefit from the overall direction of price continuing higher. So there are two different ways in which we can capitalize on a trend. But before I even talk about those strategies, I want to talk about a very important concept called price correction and price correction is the foundation of the strategies that I'm about to discuss. So whenever we have a large move up in the markets or a large move down in the markets, we can't just infinitely move higher or infinitely move lower. At some point, we're going to see a price correction. Like you just ran 25 miles and you're about to run another 25 miles. Well, obviously not. Unless you're David Goggins, you're not gonna be able to do it. You need to rest. You need to hydrate yourself. You need to sleep. You need to eat in between those two marathons. Well, the markets work in a very similar way. Whenever the markets run a marathon or have a huge increase in price, there needs to be a correction that occurs. And these corrections could happen in two different ways. The first way it could happen is prices move up drastically and then they correct through time in the form of a base. So essentially prices moved up and then they go sideways. They base, they consolidate and they correct through time. Prices aren't moving up or down during that base or during that resting period. We're just staying in one price area. And for this, 
This is called a breakout. Our job is to time our entry when prices have finished resting and they're ready to break out again. The other way in which prices can correct is through price action itself, where we have a large move up in the markets and then we get a retracement or a pullback. Almost everyone knows this strategy as buying the dip, and that's exactly what it is. This is a type of price correction. And of course, our job as traders is to time our entry when prices have finished correcting, they finished dipping, they finished the retracement, and from there we get in and capitalize on the move higher, and of course, the continuation of the uptrend. These two strategies are essentially the only strategies that I trade in the markets. I trade price correction strategies where I find an established trend, I know where prices are going, I know what the trend is, and from there, I find ways to enter into that trend and of course capitalize on prices moving in the direction of the trend. And the two ways those corrections can happen are either through a retracement, prices pulling back, or prices basing and correcting through time. A very important tool that I use to actually time my entries in the markets and for me to understand what the trend is in the first place are moving averages and there are a bunch of different moving averages that you could use you could use the nine day the 20 day the 40 day the 50 day you could use the 100 ma you could use the 200 ma but personally i like to use the 20 ma and the 200 ma on whatever platform you're using if it's trading view great go ahead and look up moving average and from there you can either click on the simplest one or you can click on exponential whatever you prefer but for me personally i like to keep it simple and I only like to use simple moving averages. So go ahead and double click on moving average simple or moving average exponential. I already double clicked on SMA 20 and from there just go to the settings icon and change the length to 20. It might already be nine or a different number, but change the length to 20, then press okay. And then just go to the other moving average and change uh, the number of whatever it's set to, to 200, and then press OK. I'm not going to go too in-depth on how to use moving averages because that's a rabbit hole in itself. That's so much information. So I'm going to save that for another video. However, just by looking at this chart right here, you could see so many instances of how prices are respecting the 20 period moving average and the 200 period moving average when you have an uptrend or a downtrend. For example, right here, prices dropped directly into the 200. That's where they bottomed and they started to continue higher. And you could see during this uptrend, we consistently either base or retrace into this rising 20 MA. And you could see how well prices respect the 20 MA during an established uptrend. And that's exactly why I use it. Even for a downtrend, you could see how prices are respecting the 20 MA here how prices are respecting the 20 MA here as well. And of course, how the 20 MA is being respected by price at the end of the downtrend right here. To keep it simple and to keep it short, moving averages help us understand what the trend is doing. And it helps us understand when we wanna be timing our entries into an established trend, whether that's through a retracement or whether that is through a consolidation and a base breakout. Moving averages help us understand market structure because they help us understand what the trend is and what the buyers and the sellers are doing within that trend. The only other strategy that I trade are reversal strategies, and these are essentially exhaustion strategies. Let me explain. Let's say we have a very bullish uptrend where we have higher highs, higher lows, and that uptrend is continuing and it's moving higher and it's moving higher and it's moving higher. At some point, that trend might be exhausted where the buyers have exhausted themselves. All of the buyers already entered into that stock or crypto or Forex pair, and there aren't any buyers left. And from there, even the smallest amount of sellers can bring prices lower. So this is essentially a strategy based on trend exhaustion. When the trend has continued for so long, it went up so much that we could capitalize on the buyers or the sellers being exhausted and we trade the reversal. Let's look at an excellent example of this, and this is on Moderna mRNA, and we're looking at the weekly chart here, and you can literally see how the trend is almost becoming exhausted. We're moving up, we're moving up, we're moving up, we're moving up, and at some point, it's exhausted. There aren't any buyers left. 
the buyers have exhausted themselves and at that point we have an absolute collapse and a reversal in price now this is the monthly chart but let's go ahead and take a look at the weekly chart well the weekly chart is pretty clear we have an established uptrend we have higher highs higher lows we're continuing that uptrend but at some point we go parabolic and the trend is essentially becoming exhausted where we just go straight up straight up straight up straight up straight up and at, at that point, there aren't any buyers left. And from there we collapsed and it was actually an amazing reversal opportunity. This is what happened on the daily chart. As you could see, we became exhausted. You could see the trend beginning to accelerate, the buyers becoming exhausted. And from there we saw a total collapse on MRNA. So this is the other strategy that I trade. I look for trends that are becoming exhausted. And then I look for a potential reversal on those trends so as you can see this is the foundation of reading market structure and ultimately price action and a lot of people make it super confusing but hopefully by the end of this video at this point you're probably saying to yourself oh my god this is actually way simpler than i thought it was now i understand how to read candlesticks the time frames how to read trends the strategies that exist within trends and that's the point trading is supposed to be simple it's not easy but it's supposed to be simple. And even if you knew a lot of this stuff, I'm sure this video really reinforced your basic uh, understanding and your foundation about reading price action and market structure. How do you ever expect to make money if you don't have a very strong grasp and understanding of the basics? Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you're finding tremendous value in this video. If you're someone who wants to accelerate your learning besides my YouTube channel, I have a free 10 plus hour trading course that over 52,000 students are currently watching. The video is actually listed on my YouTube, but I added so much more information in the free course on my WAP community. You should see the link in the description and that will take you to my free course and of course my community and start taking advantage of all of the free education that I'm providing you. If you're someone who is a serious trader and you're looking for a serious mentor to trade with every single day, I have a mentorship program where I take you under my wing, I teach you from A to Z, I build the foundation for your trading success, and from there, you trade live with me every single day. I stream my screen so you could watch my every execution. We're in the same call, and whenever I make money, hopefully you're gonna be making money. This is a serious program for serious traders who are looking to go full-time into trading and if that interests you you can book a call below and we'll see if you are a good fit for the mentorship program